Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and joining us today is Rachel Givens Johnson. She is a postdoctoral fellow at the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship, and she studies themes of embodiment, imminence, and materialism in religious discourse of the 18th and 19th centuries. Thank you, Rachel, for joining us. Thanks for having me. So today we're talking about Alma chapters five through seven, and the artwork we're looking at is called In Christ We Are Made Alive. And this is actually by a BYU student named Joseph Chu. Joseph is a microbiology major at BYU, and he submitted this as part of our 2023 Book of Mormon art contest that we held uh, at BYU in conjunction with the Maxwell Institute. And this piece actually won um, our first place prize in 2023, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll get into the piece in a little bit, but it is a digital print. Um, and so let me just first read the scriptures that Joseph said he, he, that inspired this piece for him. So this comes from Alma chapter five and it's verses 14 and 15. Um, and this is, by the way, this is Alma, the son of Alma. Um, who's preaching in Zarahemla and reminding the people of what his father Alma had previously taught them. And he says, um, Behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have you spiritually been born of God? Have you received his image in your countenances? Have you experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Do ye, do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith and view this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body? So, Rachel, um, would you mind just first looking at this artwork with me and how do you think it relates to these scriptures? How is it interpreting Alma here? Yeah, I was really arrested by this image when I first saw it. It's, uh, you know, not your kind of typical representative art. Uh, as I look at the image, I just see these kind of organic and geometric lines uh, conveying a kind of sense of, of life force, of arteries and veins and um, interconnectedness. You, you know, it took me a couple glances at the image to see where one body stopped and the other started. Um, and in fact, I think, I think they're kind of melded in a really evocative way. So I, I love this, this image to me just conveyed in this kind of universal way, the kind of nuts and bolts of, of embodiment and entanglement and, mm -hmm. uh, sharing a kind of similar physical nature in terms of the intricacies and the the pathways of, of our bodies. Right. And, and Chu has, has added all this sort of hidden symbolism in the piece. Did you notice some of the tree of life symbolism in there? Yes. Yeah. I was noticing to me, I saw um, what looked like kind of leaves coming out of the head of Christ. And then you see an actual tree placed in that kind of halo or, or, or um, head uh -huh. area. I'm not sure yeah. which one is, is being represented and yeah. um, just these kind of floral or, or botanical elements kind of scattered throughout the, both figures. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, we don't in tree of life imagery, we don't often see Christ directly associated with it, but I think that is what the scriptures teach us. And that's what Nephi saw in his vision of the tree of life, that it's about Christ and, and the condescension of God. And, and I like the way that he's visualized that very clearly here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to go back to what you were saying with the sort of entanglement of the figures. You wrote a really beautiful essay in the Wayfair magazine recently um, about embodiment and, and sort of your own personal experience of living in a body and, and coming to terms with that and, and, and the joys and also the complications that that can bring. Um, how do you think embodiment might play into this piece? Yeah. So one thing I love about um, our Latter-day Saint faith is the premium we put on the body. And it took me a long time to kind of recognize this. I think it's very easy to fall back into these tropes of like spirit versus body or self versus other. Um, and, and our faith kind of dispels with that bifurcation because we believe 
that one, we are embodied souls and that our mortal bodies were a critical, if not the point of inhabiting this, this stage of, of our progression. Um, but it's a very, uh, some might call it like a monist idea of embodiment where, where spirit and matter, really there's not a clear dividing line. Uh, Joseph Smith talked about spirit being more refined matter. And so there's this idea that they're, they're really kind of inseparable um, even as, you know, the ways in which we talk about them differently can, can vary in, in our context. But what I love about uh, the Latter-day Saint conception of embodiment is one, that it is a progressive part of our identity, uh, of, our, of our journey towards uh, divinity and, and godhood and really inhabiting the full divine nature. It's not, it's not a fall. It wasn't um, an accident. It was a very educative purposeful part. Um, in fact, Parley Pratt has this lovely way of, of talking about it. If I can um, read that for a second, he's, he's describing the uh, ways in which we kind of go from these germs or, or uh, embryonic kind of state to a, a more progressive um, full, full bodied divinity. And he talks about how uh, Men and women possess the attributes, senses, sympathies, and affections of God in a rudimental state. And uh, these attributes are an embryo to be gradually developed. They resemble a bud or a germ, which gradually develops into a bloom. Uh, and here I love the kind of associations with uh, Joseph Chu's piece here with the, the kind of tree of life, the blooming elements of the piece, uh, and produces the mature fruit after its own kind. And it talks about the process of spiritual regeneration, where it is both, um, it is deeply embodied. He says it quickens the intellectual faculties, it increases, enlarges, expands, and purifies our passions and affections. Um, it talks about how it develops beauty of person, form, and features. It gives health, vigor, animation, and social feeling. It strengthens and gives tone to the nerves, its marrow to the bone, joy to the heart, light to the eyes, music to the ears, and life to the whole being. Hmm. Um, and so I just find that just a really remarkably compelling vision of the Latter-day Saint approach to spiritual transformation. There is no real difference between uh, the spirit and the body. It's, it's kind of part of the same package. Uh, and I also think we can try to be attuned to the ways in which our bodies can sometimes be used to distance ourselves from, from each other, right? I'm here, you're there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm enclosed in my own sensations. You have yours. Um, but Christ, I think, in this image is, is breaking through that and showing how interdependent our, our embodiment is and how this becomes the way in which we co-create shared experiences and we move in the same world and we share the same oxygen. And there's so many layers at which we are so entangled uh, and and it's a, more of a fantasy to think of ourselves walking around in these body envelopes i love there's a couple of verses right before where joseph picks up on verses 14 and 15 but a few verses before in verse 7 it talks about christ changing their hearts he's awakened them out of a deep sleep they awoke unto god um, and so it's really this ongoing right this isn't just a an a culminating resurrection. This is like a moment by moment, day by day, awakening, enlivening, resurrecting out of, uh, out of darkness into light, out of rancor into forgiveness, out of, you know, bitterness into compassion. There's just so many ways in which we are constantly uh, being chained as Alma talks about chained um, right. and in bondage and Christ is, is regenerating and freeing us and, I find that really beautiful in both uh, Joseph's portrayal of it here and, and in Alma's discourse. Yeah, I love that. Thanks. So just to, to wrap up, let's just look at the piece a little bit. And I just would love to take a moment to have your response aesthetically to this. Yeah, well, it definitely, um, to me, is is unique. And I think in part because it really, well, in part, it's more abstract than our kind mm -hmm. of uh, representational anthropomorphic depictions of Christ or, or, or the human body. And in, in a way, it forces you to defamiliarize yourself with what you think about embodiment mm -hmm. by portraying it in such a different way. And so for me, it made me really think about that level of embodiment, the the interconnection and the the crisscrossing lines. And I love how he uses, you know, both straight and kind of winding, organic, mm -hmm. uh, patterned and wild I, I think it really captures um, 
Well, it, it, it made me think differently about embodiment. It didn't just kind of conform with my with my intuitive sense of it. It made me recognize more clearly the intricacy and complexity and um, that kind of entanglement as we see Christ's body connected to ours. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and, and even the symbolism of red as, I mean, in this case, making me think of like the redeeming blood of Christ. Um, yeah. But the way that red kind of flows between the figures almost, I mean, I don't know. It almost makes me feel like, like a mother and baby, like the yeah. way. And, and you actually, I think pointed this out in your Wayfair essay too, those ideas of, of Christ almost being like maternal in a way, in the way that he nurtures us. Yeah, exactly. And this kind of maternal fetal exchange of like, we're drawing on his life force to sustain our own life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's lots of analogies, you know, the vine and the fruit and, and all sorts of these organic metaphors like we see here or with, you know, motherhood and, and pregnancy where it's so direct. And in fact, I love how like the light, at least the kind of rays that to me strike me as light come out of his, out of his center, not out of his head, which, you know, I would, I just, that just tends to be my association of light and and intellect and spirit, and it's coming right from his abdomen, right from yeah. you know, his kind of heart and gut. And so I, yeah. to me, that's really evocative too about um, grounding Christ's light mm -hmm. in our, in that more organic embodied way. Yeah. That what you said makes me think about how so many scriptures talk about his bowels of mercy, maybe yeah. kind of like a visualization of his mercy. Yeah. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. Anything else yeah. you'd like to add? Uh, just how much I, I love it and I appreciate Joseph sharing his his vision. I find it so expansive and, um, you know, provocative in the way it makes us think about our relationship to Christ and, and embodiment. And I And I really love it. Great. Thank you so much, Rachel. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.